assumptions about how it would go were um, came to fruition, and I think we had a good time. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty uh, small get together as their first one, but they had quite a few locals show up. Uh, a lot of people that are there in the tight knit community. But I think what differs about this one uh, is that the eco survival group is more of a coalition. Um, so there's some names or some people that are really experts in their own distinct realms uh, and each one I guess not everybody does but the majority of them offer their own classes in their particular niche of the survival world and as a whole they get together and they create this complete picture of survival and what it really is what it means and, and all the different aspects of it a lot of it kind of gets glorified on TV shows and and uh, you know, a lot of it is associated with the outdoor and the wilderness type stuff. But they even go into the aspect as far as some firearms and defensive training that you know, just a uh, survival in general is the art of staying alive. And that may be in the wilderness, but that may also be you know, you get uh, mugged while you're pumping gas, and somebody's trying to steal your wallet or shoot you to take your money. And, you know, regardless of the situation, survival is staying alive. And so they bring this broad perspective and real-world applications. Uh, you know, yeah, everybody, a lot of people, maybe not everybody, has have pistols. And you go to the gun range and you line up and you plink targets and you square off. And, and, and a lot of that is good. And it's, it's decent practice, I guess, to get familiar with guns. But the fact of the matter is FBI studies show that... Uh, what they call the rule of threes, that majority of gunfight fatalities and, and gunfights in general are done in, uh, what, three seconds? Yeah. Within three meters, and there's three shots fired. So it, it's really fast, it's really close, and going to the range and squaring up and clicking targets is not necessarily going to help you in that situation. So you really have to analyze what the real world statistics and data shows and, and assume that that is going to be the vast majority of any life-threatening situation that you'll be in. So even even the tactical side of it takes a different spin than most of the uh, classes and things we've seen in the past. So really neat, broad perspective. Uh, Dusty, you want to go over who all was there? Yes. So speaking of sometimes survival stuff gets a little bit dramatized on TV, a lot of the guys uh, are big names that have had some TV exposure and will have more TV exposure in the future. And those include Alan Kay, who was the winner of A Season of Alone. Alone is a show on History Channel. Yep. And Alan actually won probably 50 days out on Vancouver Island. Yeah, I want to say like 56 maybe. The premise of the show is they drop you off at 10 different items and it's just you by yourself filming yourself and among 12 of the people who are also scattered throughout an area and you just that gets in contact and they <laughs> speaking say, of oh hey we're just talking about alan k <laughs> so i guess he's on watching live and so alan k actually won this survival show it's one of the few shows that um has been on v in the history of reality television that um, i think is legitimate in so far as they don't mislead the viewer as to what what's happening. If you, you don't go late at night to the hotel and and you don't fake the skills, it is pretty voyeuristic in so far as you see everything is happening. I'm probably editing comes into play, and, and I'm sure that anyone who's been on one of these TV shows will be the first one to tell you that um, it's not exactly how it goes down, and they have to dramatize it. But um, Alan Kay. Um, is not only the winner of that show, but uh, he is also very legitimized within the within the community of survival experts. He's a well-rounded individual, and he was one of the instructors there. Uh, along with Alone is Justin Vinito. Justin is currently uh, a um, teacher at Rock Castle Training. It's Rock Castle, right? Not Castle Rock. Rock Castle Training up in Georgia. Uh, Kentucky, I think. Oh, really? Is that yeah, I think he's in Kentucky. Oh, okay. And the reason he's there is because he spent, I think, 15 years as a sniper in the Army, and as well as other various um, 
other details of security outside the army and so he's he's got that legitimate tactical background and not only that we'll go into i guess a little bit detail in a little bit but he doesn't just take that tactical approach which is just kill anything that moves it the theme of this entire eco event was that it was a real world reality approach versus fantasy which is very common these days in the survival industry is to get too far down a road of fantasy and this obsession with actually wanting to be on a deserted island or wanting to be in the zombie apocalypse and while those are fun and it makes survival and self-sufficiency approachable it's not usually based on facts and practicality and so you've got to watch out when you go down that road uh, so the, that, that's two of the guys who were there. There's also Justin Cook. He's down currently in Pensacola, Florida. A guy who not only runs um, uh, some good social media for some bushcraft groups, so I like that he brings um, bushcraft and this primitive skills to uh, a, a, a younger audience and to a, a different demographic sometimes. And when you say primitive skills, what are you talking about there? What is it that Justin uh, well, he's very known for uh, flint napping. So, taking a, a big hunk of rock and turning it into a nice, sexy stone that can be used for a functional tool. And we'll get into a little bit, in a little, a little bit later of his kind of approach, which is really interesting with this particular, this particular group of individuals. Um, but Justin's a, a, a really world-renowned uh, flint napper. He, he, he has some of his artifacts that he's created or, or artifact um, copies in museums um, and he is also actually on the show Man, Woman, Wild Man, and, and Men, Women, Wild wait, okay yeah, a version of Man, Woman, Wild where they send out different couples to islands he went into Norway and they survived 20 something days um, and it wasn't pretty and it wasn't, it wasn't sexy and it wasn't dramatically filled with um, them sitting there starving and, and complaining so it probably didn't make for the best TV and I think he got bugged by the producers to be a little bit more dramatic and he just refused to be a sellout. Um, so Justin's another one of the legit characters who has joined this group. There's also Native, I don't even know Native's real name after calling himself Native. Joshua Kirk, I think. Okay, there's Native who is, um, I think the owner and operator of Four Winds Survival School. That's one of his, his fortes is, is being leader of that. He's a guy who has done a lot of self-sufficient living. Uh, I think he, he grew up with no running water, electricity, and has maintained that lifestyle. They're really big into homesteading, uh, and they're, they're where, close to by where we were uh, in Georgia. He leads great campfire sing-alongs, too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to come soon. Yeah. And um, let's see, uh, Lee, which I'm not sure Lee's last name, but Lee is helped out a lot. He was a great guy. He was also Lee him. Brown, I believe it was. Okay, but I guess he's the new guy in and kind of the the group punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally, Alan's punching bag. Cowie's punching bag. Cowie is is uh, the barefoot hippie of the bunch. I think he's just there for 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 just the uh, the aesthetic. <laughs> He's uh, he's the guy. He's the the Matt Graham. He's the um, uh, when he's studied with Matt Graham. Yeah, Hawaiian he's man, he's a yeah. he's a mini Matt Graham. I when guess he's a native Hawaiian, and uh, he's he's got a little different skill set and interpretation than the other group. But that's I think that's part of it is just a cross section of people and skill sets that are there. Really yeah, ties it all together. Yeah, so you have you have Alan who is six foot rainy. Raining six foot six in one corner, big old guy, law enforcement type with um, uh, cargo pants and boots, and probably would never catch him with his shoes off. And then you got Cowie on the other side, who is a barefoot guy with no shirt and uh, 140 a dress on or something. But he also does a lot of uh, martial martial arts and combat training stuff as well. So he is a uh, hundred. Forty pounds of cuddly looking ferociousness yeah and, and although they they do have a um, they both like those two individuals are gonna be typecasted as um, Alan being the big burly guy who um, can kill you in different ways in your sleep uh, he's also really formidable when it comes to 
primitive skills, primitive tool, um, plant, herbal knowledge, and so he's well-rounded, just as Cowie is too. Cowie led a class while we were there on, um, what, what is his martial arts of choice? Jiu-Jitsu, I believe, and defensive jiu-jitsu. But, so they're, they're different enough to be to, to have a diverse background that brings a lot to the table, but they're alike also that there's congruency in the way that they teach. And I think the way that they teach in the underarching, the over overarching theme that came through with every one of them when they got up and led a class, uh, I think that was the most important part and that's the most unique characteristic that we saw from, from Eco Survival Group. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, and I, I think, that, you know, just to be clear about who they are, uh, essentially each one of them, for the most part, has their own, I think I may have mentioned this earlier, but they have their own individual specialties where they teach classes outside of this group, and this is a coalition that gets together to really cover the broad picture of, of what it all is and how it all ties together, and then if you have a, an area of interest or a weak point in your life where you need to put a little more focus, you go to one of these guys individually and uh, kind of approach them to actually get more of that training, more of that specialty. Yeah, because survival, I think when I was younger it wasn't as cool as it is now. Reality TV has made survivalism, self-reliance a really cool hip thing, and in, in that I think it's become stylized and it's become a culture within itself, and so it's got a lot of little sub-tribes. But I think what they have been able to do is say, okay, we're not gonna be tactical, we're not gonna be bushcraft, because those things have a common ground, and we're gonna focus on that, and that common ground is surviving, is being self-sufficient, being self-reliant, being an independent individual that when something happens, whether it be in an urban environment or in a wilderness environment, that you have the skills and the mindset to be able to make it on the other side because that is truly what the whole point of survival is. is it's not to be in some cool group of, of like-minded individuals and just uh, get to chit-chat on the internet with them or share some of your, the, really the reality of the matter is you, you just want to live the next day. You want to go home to your family. And they, they always, every one of these classes that they did, they always brought that back to the truth and the, that was the whole argument is it's fun to make arrows like Justin Cook would, would obviously present. He's great at it and he showed us how you, know, you can do a couple different uh, couple different tips and tricks of how to make an arrow um, out of flint. But the, the, and it's fun it's, and it's therapeutic and it's great and it's probably a cool skill to learn. But the reality of the matter is the first thing Justin did when he got up to teach his class is he said, okay, why do we have this skill? And if we answered, uh, cause you know, we want to make a sharp object like a knife. Okay, he takes a stone, bangs another stone against it, a shard comes off, a flake, and you have you have you have a cutting tool. If that's what you need in a, in a situation, is a cutting tool. It doesn't have to be overthought into. Let me shape this stone into this nice, neat, sexy uh, knife that's hefted onto a piece of wood or something. If you need a if you need a cutting tool, let's get serious. Make a cutting tool. Good good is better than perfect. In that prevailed throughout the entire training and I think it's the whole reason we drove up here is because we saw that some of these guys aren't trying to stylize survival and pigeonhole it and make it cool in such a way that it doesn't become practical anymore and that it's more of a club. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and it's definitely the practical applications and uh, yeah, I'm glad we got invited to come out to this because it was, it was a, it, it's looking like it's going to be a great thing. Like I said, this is the first event that they've done, and uh, they, uh, they've got a lot of potential. Hopefully, you guys can, especially people that are local in the area, come out and hit the next one. Uh, we'll, we'll start getting more details on when they're planning that. We'll share it out on our page, and uh, we'll definitely be driving out for more of these classes. I think uh, Eco Survival Group, I, I think that the, probably the next thing, they have a lot of different ideas of how they can capitalize on the select group of individuals that they have as instructors and involved with this group. I'm sure it'll continue to grow. They already have some really good assets that they can pull from. So probably, I'm sure they'll, be, they'll do more classes. This was their first event, and they will probably do a class-themed uh, another gathering or event. And they have probably other ideas. I'm sure they'll 
sure their Facebook Facebook page would be the best way to continue to follow up with their up-to-date stuff. Their, their website, too, will have probably upcoming classes. EcoSurvivalGroup.com is their new website. I think they're going to be probably, probably continue to hone that, refine that, have more information on that. But I think right now, essentially what it was is this is the first inaugural event just to kind of fill it out, see how everything's going, make some face-to-face -face contact with everybody. We were honored we were invited up. And I think that insofar as it was us being able to get together because we are from diverse, different backgrounds and places with geographically in the United States. Native joint. Hey! <laughs> Native, you have to go back and listen to... Uh, uh, yeah, you're late. Too late. You don't have to rewatch the whole thing from the start. So, um, I, I think that the, 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 we, the, that it was a success that we were all able to come together. Unfortunately, we're not all located in the same little geographic area. So we came from Texas. Justin came from Florida. Some of the guys are from Southern Carolina, South Carolina, Southern Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Uh, you said Kentucky. Yeah. So uh, that was great that we were able to actually get some face-to-face -face time, and I hope that we'll be able to have that a lot more in the future. I, I can only imagine when you get a group of people like this together, and not only are they diverse, but they have a lot of overlap in the way that, that uh, we see a philosophy in, the, the, in, in what the